Confetti Club, it is Fixie, and if you saw my last video, you would know that I recently was in Montreal working with 6% Doki Doki um, at Otakuthon, and I'm here to give you a little bit more of a sneaky behind the scenes of my preparation for my runway look. When I was in Tokyo back in March, I had the absolute honor of having a din din with some people from Kauai International and some people from 6%, and there Sebastian mentioned that he wanted to have me at this like magical Canada Kauai new generation tour thing. Thing that just sounded amazing. All about uniting different people that love and live kawaii culture across the world and especially Canada for their Canada tour. And if you guys were not aware, I live and have always lived in Canada. Um, I know like voice and face and hair, a lot of people just assume that I'm American because that's where I guess more people are from. But no, I'm up here with all the mises and the geese. Anyway, I come home, keep doing my YouTube thing, finish up my school year, and then when we touch back base again on the Canada tour fashion show thing, um, Yui actually told me that I was invited to wear my own designs and creations in the 6% runway. Specifically, here's the email, here's what my face looked like after reading it, just my brain, I still feel like I'm 14 years old and on Tumblr some days, and I just, I cannot contain my fangirl. So basically, I'm not gonna pretend like this wasn't the coolest, most blessed opportunity that like I personally ever could have asked for myself. Like, this is one of those things I wouldn't even put on my bucket list because it's just so out there, but I'm 21 and it already happened and I'm gonna show you how I made the outfit and try not to cry. All I knew was that I was going to be wearing some of my stuff mixed with some 6% stuff, but I didn't know what 6% stuff. So I kind of just blindly went in and I was like, I'm gonna go find some inspo. I'm gonna go hunt for fabrics. I'm gonna like, you know, I did some Pinteresting, some interneting. I actually read some books. I literally like cracked open my JFash mags for inspo. And I ended up making a big fuzzy monster skirt. I've been showing some sneaky peekies on my Patreon as well, which is always in the description if you guys want. I realized that I never plug or talk about my Patreon or anything. <laughs> So I'm trying to get better at that. I hope that's not annoying. And I filmed the entire process of making it, so I'm here to show you that today. Um, the skirt, I was definitely going for like a fuzzy, rainbow, technicolor, monster vibe. Very 6%-y, um, but a little more pastel, a little a little more confetti, if you will. I have been on a hunt to make like my ideal wavy skirt. And I'm trying to get the perfect, like, clamp-esque wavy waves. I, I don't know, I've been experimenting pretty much just my, my whole existence. I tried horse hair, I've tried circle skirts, double circle skirts, I've tried, like, box pleats and any kind of stabilizer, hem infuser, and I've tried wire, I put wire in Flora for some reason to get her waves, and this time, I tried something called Buckram. All I knew was that I wanted like a heavy stabilizer, something to really give it that like rrr, 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 I'm on a runway, womp womp womp, this is not practical look. But I also got like a ton of the fabric, so I think I'm gonna whip up like an easy circle skirt skater version for me to wear like on my day to day. I started by chopping up my waist measurement times three. Um, that's usually my rule for any skirt that I want like the same amount of volume in, I pretty much just triple my waist for everything. I sewed it to the stabilizer because it was not iron-on. I hemmed that puppy up, which, god, sewing through this slippery, slippery, faux fur piley stuff, ooh, I'm glad I stabilized it first because if I didn't do that first, like, nightmare fabric to work with. God, that's gonna suck when I make that skater skirt version. Oh well, <laughs> that sounds like a problem for future Dillion. And then I got down on the floor and I pleated it. Um, this was really fun because it kind of felt like I was like creating an accordion. I was like Weird Al's accordionist. I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I decided to use uh, knife pleats, not box pleats. Um, I don't know why. I just, I was literally gonna do box pleats and then I sat down to do it and I was like, I've never done them all going the same way. Let's twy it. 
I think it turned out okay. Um, I feel like if I went back and recut this skirt at this point, I would have made it like four inches shorter. I feel like it was a little too long and bulky on me. But again, um, this was created like maybe two weeks before the fashion show. So working with what we have. I basted it in those pleats and then started working on the waistband. This waistband, thank you very, very much to my sweet BFF Amy for the tip. I decided to try a different technique that my fashion friend Amy suggested, which was stitching in the ditch. And I've heard this before, but I kn I knew it meant like sewing in the itty bitty little sneaky crease bit. The seam, I guess is what the frig that's called. <laughs> But I didn't know like what that did. In what instance would you want to stitch in the ditch? What it, like why? What purpose does it serve? This purpose, I remember Googling like, how does American Apparel make their, their, their tennis skirt waistbands? Like any tennis, any, ugh. <laughs> I'm so excited to start school so I can get more knowledge that makes me feel this amazed. <laughs> Literally just figuring out that stitch in the ditch equals that type of waistband that I was trying to figure out how it worked. So I did that and I think it turned out pretty good. And here's some footage of me stitching in the ditch. Um, definitely I should have used a more stable fabric for the friggin' waistband, but I do like that when it's on me, it's like tight to the body and gives that like pink satin ribbon feel. But when it's just hanging up, it's like, oh, the rest of that skirt is way too heavy for like the thickness of the waistband fabric. I had this big chunky like it's border, it's like neon green or pastel yellow, who knows? But I had this big chunky separating zipper and it was just laying around from a project I abandoned years ago. And I was like, you know what? I'm going with it. The monster aura inside of me told me it was time for a contrasting chunky separating zipper sewn on the outside of my fabric. <laughs> And that also made it way easier to get on and off. And then I made this big bow um, that I just stuck on the back as well because I feel like just everything is improved by a giant bow. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> Maybe that's something I need to like beat out of my brain or all my designs will look the same, but I like, I wanna, I wanna feel like a princess. And then the jacket. So this is where my story earlier of like not knowing exactly what 6% items I was gonna be wearing was, was that a sentence? So basically, I have the skirt pretty well on its way to being done and then I check my email. It's like three to four days before I leave for Montreal and sweet Yui san from 6% who is kind of like the communicator. There's like Sebastian and Yui and they're like a fierce duo of together they are 12% doki doki. And Yui sends me the outfit that I meant to wear and I'm like, awesome, sweet. It includes a skirt. <laughs> I assumed a skirt would be my safest option because I've never been able to fit into 6% skirts, but I guess they have changed and they have lots of options of skirts that would fit like a squishy squishy self like I. So I basically was like, that's awesome, that looks sweet, I will wear whatever the frig you want, but just so you know, I also have these. And immediately she wrote back and said, I love your skirt and jacket, never mind, let's do that. <laughs> So that was also kind of a weird surreal moment because I literally did not ever want to be like, excuse me, this is what I'm wearing. Um, I like just so anxiously and shyly, like I felt bad even sending the images. But I'm really glad I did because um, immediately she was like, no, yeah, that's what we're doing. And I got to wear um, some stuff on the runway that I was really proud of. Um, and then I started the jacket because I was still going to be wearing the shirt and the leggings and the other stuff from the look. It was just the skirt we were swapping out. So since now I knew that I had this like top and this skirt, I was like, what else can I add to this fit to like make it more me, bring in more pixie essence? And I decided to do a jacket because that way I could have it open. You could see the front of the shirt, um, but then I could have some fun action on the arms and back, which is what I did. So I used this jacket that I already had lying around um, and I decided to repurpose it and confetti club ify it. I don't know how many of y'all came from the battle jacket, like crust punk scene or anything like that, but I was um, definitely, <laughs> let's just say I wore some very tattered, spiky, 
painted on denim back in my day so this definitely took me back and that was a, a welcome feeling I actually did a time-lapse of me painting the back of the jacket so I'm going to put that in here if you guys want a fun little speed paint action And then to spice up the sides, I was really inspired to do these rainbow ribbon cascading things. I had a lot of different designs in my sketchbook as I was just like picking my own brain, trying to come up with anything and everything for this runway look. And I had a lot of stuff with ribbons going on. There was actually a book back when I was little that my mom used to read to me called Ribbon Rescue because the main character's name was Jillian, which is my name if you didn't know that. Hi, my birth name's not Pixie. And I just really like, it was about this cute little girl named Jillian and there's like a wedding or something and she like runs around and with ribbit. I don't, I don't remember this story. That's so trash. But anyway, inspired by my childhood, uh, I just started messing around with different ideas for rainbow ribbons, ri long ribbons, short ribbons, big ribbons, small ribbons, and ended up doing this. Eater, eater, eater. But I'm definitely using some of those other designs for other projects. So, my OC, don't steal. And then this is what the final look looked like. Um, if you watched my vlog, the last one that was up, the last video before this one, um, you, you've probably seen it. But hey, here it is in better quality with lighting on a backdrop and stuff. I definitely want to make a more wearable, less lampshade like version of the skirt. Um, and I'm glad I, oh my god, I scored on that fabric, man. The fabric, I went on like friends and family sale day 
and I literally saved like $200. <laughs> Thank you Fabricville for the very, very good sales. I really hope you guys like this video because I'm starting fashion school in a week, so there might be more videos of me sewing, talking about sewing, talking about fashion and fashion school, and please um, give me a comment, comment, uh, uh, scissors emoji, that's so obscure no one's gonna be able to find, you know what? <laughs> that that makes it more challenging. Comment a scissors emoji if you're excited for fashion related sewing related videos. I'm gonna be trying to vlog more like my daily days and school days and I want to do a morning routine and stuff. Like I feel like I'm finally settled and like finally in my life. It's been a year since I moved in here and I feel like I'm finally like I'm here, I live here, and it's time to build my empire. <laughs> my empire is made of marshmallow peeps. That in the sun, <laughs> honey. This video is featuring Petty Club member is utter trash art. This is not utter trash at all. This blows me the frig away. Oh my gosh, what just an amazing illustration. Oh, I did a piece for Pixie Locks around this time last year. Wait, what? The hair, the shininess, the detail in the boots is crazy. The detail in my tattoos is crazy. Um, that is a very intimidating thing to draw. If you ever sit down to draw fan art of someone who has tattoos, it can be spooky, but like you did not shy away. And that just, I, uh, I have the flower in my hair. This is my new trademark that I, should, that I just decided. I am now the flower head lady. Nice to meet you. Thank you so, so, so much for this. It's just, oh, my heart can't even handle it at all. I have been really, really bad at reminding people to like, I, I'm bad at being a YouTuber and like mentioning to subscribe and like and bell and Patreon and stuff. Is, is that like super duper annoying when people remind you to do that stuff? But then on the other hand, I feel like some people comment and they're like, I literally forget to like if you don't remind me because I'm like that. But uh, was that an adequate reminder? I don't know. I might, I might try to think of a new way to like, like a cute intro that has stuff like that in it. I hope that is okay. But right now, all you have is this rambling mess <laughs> warning you to come. Anyway, I love you guys so, so much. And I'll see you in the next video, which is not this one, because this one is over. God. I've seen you do. Okay. It's Nina time. I guess it's Nina time. Oh, there's Moth. Okay. You got it? <gasps> Look at him go. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Tito and Jake.